Realm presents Control Alt Destroy. Episode 5. Lonnie Kahananui pulled the cup noodles from the microwave and brought them to the living room, where she settled back onto the couch and swiped her tablet once. The movie on her television had continued without her as her long distance friends tuned in. Last Lonnie had seen, the ambitious ingenue had been about to decide whether to acquiesce to her boss's demands or attend her boyfriend's birthday party. What did I miss? Lonnie said. She picked her job over her boyfriend. A tinny voice came over the tablet. She's trying, the connection lagged. Both. Yoshiko, Lonnie said. Hang on, you're breaking up. Just as the water droplet sound indicated their call had disconnected, the movie paused and the loading symbol rotated endlessly on the screen. Lonnie muttered to herself and uselessly poked at the tablet's connectivity. Internet down again for the fifth time this week. Cup noodles for dinner, thanks to mainland meat imports sky high and Indonesian trade routes in some kind of negotiation stalemate. At least the power... The lights flickered. Moving to the mainland to live near Tandy was looking better and better. If only she could get her to stop working long enough to call her mother. One. Tandy. Class Veiled Archer. Level 5. HP 71 out of 71. Status Normal. XP 6,882. Next level, 10,000. The forest weasel let out a high-pitched shriek as the fireball exploded against its furry body. And when it disintegrated into pixels, Tandy gained another 15 shared party experience points and three silver. 141 weasels, Ben said, then instinctively shook out his hand. I'm glad I spent so much time on tours of duty. Clearly it was all worth it so I could end up here, killing digital vermin. Dante rolled his eyes. Grinding is part of every MMO, especially level grinding. I still don't see why we couldn't just take one of the quests. Worked for us before. Hot fix, Tandy muttered. More changes to her game than they'd already made. Dante gave her a sideways look then just kept talking. Not only did they do a major nerf on the XP bonus for the quests we can grab right now, but they also increased the XP for some of the mobs, lowered some of the others. They also seem to have reworked the vulnerabilities for several of the mobs and increased the chain kill bonus. But some of these changes almost seem random to me, I'm telling you. I reworked the formulas for my leveling sheet post hotfix, and this is exactly what we need to be doing right now. We have to get Tandy high enough to take the next quest that would be worth our while. Otherwise, we'll be wasting our time. She needs to be at at least level six. I had a much faster leveling strategy all planned out. We were just going to coast on through the next couple of levels. They had to go and screw with everything. So, lucky us, grinding is the best way to get there for now. Just think of yourself as participating in a long gaming tradition. I just wish we had some damn Doritos. There has to be something better than this. Another weasel spawned about ten feet away from Tandy. She loosed an arrow into its torso, sending it screeching into death. Fifteen XP, three silver. Thankfully, they had replenished her arrows and their other supplies in Night's Holt before camping the weasels. Etta lifted her eyebrows. This is why we have him, Ben. He's the one who does this for a living. Give him a little credit. They had been grinding for what had to have been hours. Tandy easily could have checked exactly how long, but that would only serve to make the rest of their grind feel even more torturous. It already seemed as if the respawn times between weasels grew longer by the minute, and the tedium of doing the same thing over and over was amplified by the frosty attitudes of her teammates. They hadn't said much to her directly since their initial conversation about Tandy's role in creating the game. She wasn't sure if she should be grateful for that or not. This would go much faster if half the clearing weren't taken over by Team Russia. Ben annihilated another weasel at the spawn point he was camping. 
It barely had a chance to bare its teeth before being engulfed in flames. So when exactly are we going to figure out why they've decided to ground the same monster? They're higher level than we are. Grind, not ground. Dante sheathed his sword, then moved his hands in midair, fingers swiping and tapping deftly as he accessed his interface. He waved impatiently at them, not taking his eyes off his head. Give me a minute. Keep killing. Don't waste time. Tandy complied in silence, keeping her eye on her teammates, trying to read their body language to figure out what they were thinking, how they felt about her. Etta thwacked a weasel into submission, shaking a fern of electric blue hair out of her face. Ben took his annoyance out on each weasel that spawned. Was Dante swiping the windows of his HUD extra angrily? Of course they were still upset with her, but how upset? How hard would she have to work to earn their trust? Again. Doritos would be pretty good right now, Tandy said, trying to keep her tone light and breezy. Another arrow loosed, another weasel down with a dying shriek. Neither Etta nor Ben would look at her. Or were they just concentrating? Dante had the faraway look of someone talking on subvocal chat. Talking to Etta and Ben? Or someone else? Damn it! Dante dismissed his display with an angry swipe and lurched toward Tandy. Why is their team after the weasels? What? I don't know. I just assume they're leveling too. I already told you why they wouldn't be grinding levels the same way we are. They have another reason. None of my contacts on the other teams know anything, but something tells me you're not seeing everything. A weasel spawned between them and bared its teeth at Tandy exactly like every weasel had done prior. Before Tandy could shoot, Dante drew his sword and cut cleanly through it, earning them another paltry 15 XP and three silver each. As he sheathed his weapon again, he stepped forward, closing the distance between them. He stood so close she could practically smell the rusty metal of his plate armor. He jabbed a finger at her chest. You're the one who made this crappy game. At their level, and without a noob like you on the team, they don't have the same motivation for grinding this mob as we do. I know their mage, and she's no joke. She's going to maximize her efforts efficiently at every turn. There's some other reason beyond XP to focus on these mobs. So what is it, oh great game developer? You built the bones of this place. Why are they camping? Tandy held her hands up in front of her and took a step back. I have no idea. Not everything here came from my game. I'm not omniscient. So forest weasels aren't one of your genius inventions? No. Well, yes. I mean... Dante let out a frustrated noise and turned his attention to Etta and Ben. How are we supposed to win this thing with a liar on our team? We can't trust her. Etta sighed. Look, let's just... I did make the game, and I did make the weasels, but there wasn't anything special about them. Once again, Tandy's anxiety threatened to make her voice quaver. But she did her best to gulp it back. If the Russians want them for something other than the XP grind, I have no idea what it is. I don't know what I can do to make you believe me, but I'm telling the truth. My big secret's already out. Why would I lie now? Gee, I don't know. Maybe because that's probably not all you're hiding? Maybe you know something about this whole setup that we don't. Maybe you're spying on us for the feds. Maybe. Let's ease up a little there, Dante. Etta placed a hand on his shoulder. Ben mumbled to himself, ignoring their arguing. And Dante shrugged off Etta's hand without taking his eyes from Tandy. Cut the crap! Why are the Russians camping these mobs? I don't know. Tandy's face flushed. Everything was all wrong. Asking me over and over isn't going to change the truth. I don't know what else I can say to you. I don't believe you. Lightning struck the ground between Tandy and Dante, scorching the grass and sending Tandy stumbling back a few paces. Ben lowered his outstretched hand, then waved off their incredulous expressions. Although friendly fire couldn't hurt them, Tandy's stomach was now somewhere in her big toe and she was dizzy with adrenaline. As fascinated as I am with watching children argue, Ben said, rubbing his temple. I'm going to do a little reconnaissance and see what the other team is up to. Maybe we can learn what they know that we don't. 
Maybe it's something about the hot fix we haven't figured out yet. Dante, why don't you come with me? I need an extra set of eyes. But you'll want to change out of that noisy plate armor first. Great idea, Edda said with a meaningful nod. Tandy and I'll keep plugging away at these weasels in the meantime. Every bit of experience counts, right? Tandy nodded and nervously looked between Edda and Dante. Please just give me a break. Dante continued mean-mugging Tandy for a few beats before sucking his teeth and turning his back to her. Why do I have to change out of my armor? What am I supposed to wear? Do you still have the leather gear you started in? Ben said. Psh. Dante swiped at the air to access his inventory. Of course. I save everything unless we decide to sell it. That's the smart thing. Then equip it, genius. Ben snapped his fingers. We have recon to do. Two. Dante, class, Bladed Guardian, level seven. HP, 103 out of 116. Status, normal. XP, 21,940. Next level, 28,000. Dante and Ben cut through their end of the clearing and crossed into the forest, making a wide loop to circle the perimeter of the weasel spawn area. They'd come up behind where the Russians were camping, to see what they could learn. At least it was better than grinding for XP. Dante's entire head was hot with rage over Tandy. It was already bad enough they had to carry her through leveling. He kicked at the ground as they walked, decapitating a mushroom. Ben gave him side eye. Don't tell me you're crying over a damn mushroom. Dante kicked another one. Pull yourself together. We're getting close to the other team. They'll hear you. How are you okay with this? Tandy made this goddamn place. What else is she hiding? Listen, even if she's hiding something else, browbeating people into confession is rarely the optimal strategy. Of course I'm angry, but my emotions aren't in control. I am. Ben scanned the landscape, gaze darting over individual trees as he spoke. Then he nodded his chin in the direction of the Russians. Sweat beaded his brow from the heat of the day, even in the relative cool of the forest. It's like dealing with these guys. We could just beeline toward them and demand they tell us why they're camping here. I mean, that'd be faster. That's always an option for later. For now... Restraint affords us the opportunity to observe, to gather intel covertly, to determine the best course of action, not just the quickest or most obvious one. Dante fidgeted with a fold in his shirt. I know that. Don't you think I know that? I've ranked in plenty of MOBAs and RTSs. Shh. Ben held a hand out in front of Dante's chest. Momentary anger flared through Dante. Ben's gesture reminded him of a parent protecting a child in the passenger seat of a car. He was getting damn sick of being treated like an adolescent when he was a grown-ass man. His irritation subsided as soon as a tall, robed mage with spiky black hair headed straight toward them. Her high cheekbones and slender figure lended her an otherworldly air. When she stopped nearby, Dante recognized Olenka Timofeyeva, fellow pro-gamer and old friend from a handful of tournaments ago. She was so close, he could make out all the details of her gear. She wore several rings on her fingers and full pouches dangled from her leather belt. Shafts of sunlight broke through the canopy, illuminating motes of dust and pollen in the air, bathing the mage's face in light. A faint sheen in her robe made her look like she was draped in liquid gold like something out of a 1980s fantasy movie. Any minute now, a unicorn should trot into view. Dante stifled the chuckle and glanced down at his gear. He already missed his armor. They crouched lower to avoid being detected and silently watched Olenka from their hiding spot. Her every movement was fluid and careful. She made very little sound in the underbrush, like Ben. That's her. That's Olenka, Dante subvocalized. I can talk to her. No, we wait. We can always talk later. We only have one shot at observing. 
It pained him to just sit there in the bushes, but the guy had a point about restraint. As patronizing as Ben was, Dante had to admit he could learn from his self-control. Not that he'd ever say something like that out loud, but still. Thoughts like these weighed heavily on him lately. What had giving in to his temper ever gotten him? Looking like a fool in front of the others, making them send Tandy to calm him down. Olenka continued investigating the area, but she didn't seem to notice them. Yet. Were she to step a few feet to her left, she would angle herself to get an eyeful of half of Team USA spying on Russia's weasel purge. Fortunately for them, she stopped short of making contact, then returned to her teammates. We have to get closer, Ben sub-vocalized. You head just a bit north, over by that big rock on the map. A yellow glowing dot appeared on Dante's mini-map. I'll move in closer over here, just beyond the edge of the clearing. A white dot appeared as well, indicating Ben's target location. See what you can learn. DM me for comms. Don't let them notice you. Got it. Remember, don't move beyond the line of bushes. You need the cover. I know, I'm not a noob. Heavens, no. Anything but that. Dante refocused his attention on the other team, who still seemed oblivious to their presence. So far, at least. Occasional conversation and laughter accompanied their killing spree, but he couldn't make out what they were saying. Closer, then. A flash of orange flitted across Dante's field of vision before disappearing into a nearby bush. Oh, shit! An orange-tipped diamond! He tried to move as carefully as he could to prevent his footfalls from making too much noise, but he had to move fast. This was a rare grasshopper from this zone and the first he'd seen. Who knew when he'd get another chance? Maybe if he just slid his feet along inch by inch. He did a little silent shuffle toward the bush, then crouched down and carefully, quietly moved some of the foliage aside. The orange-tipped diamond jumped into his face, wings fluttering riotously. Dante frantically grabbed at the insect, faintly aware that his movements were making too much noise, but now he had to get the damn thing. Just as his hands cupped around the grasshopper, a shadow fell over him. Dante! He looked up into Alinka's familiar face, haloed by the sun. He held up his clasped hands. Grasshopper. There you are. Ben came up from behind Olinka, giving Dante a scolding look before she turned around, at which time he instantly transformed his expression into a saccharine smile. Hey, was just looking for my friend here. Uh-huh. She looked Ben up and down. So here's half of Team USA. We've been out here all day. Find some other way to find the scroll. Dante put the insect away and stood up, brushing his hands off on his quizzes. What scr- We weren't paying attention to where we ended up, Ben said. Didn't realize we'd wandered this far over. Right. Olinka crossed her arms and now looked Dante up and down. What the hell are you wearing? Couldn't you afford the real gear? The other three Russians continued killing weasels as they spawned, their intimidating tank Ruslana among them. It was obvious they were listening carefully, though. Ben gave them a single nod. Why don't you guys find some other way to... to get the scroll? Dante mirrored Olinka's body language and puffed up, taking a wide stance. Pretty sure we were here first, Timo Fieva. Or you could hit uninstall and go home. Bye. Olinka spread her fingers and put her open hand in Dante's face, breaking her intimidating demeanor with laughter. Dante couldn't help himself. He laughed too. Everyone on his team was so damn serious all the time. Well, I'd make another joke, but you're already here, so... The other team's archer had stopped mob farming and now stood just behind and to the side of Olenka. Yeah, okay, Dante, I hear you. Olenka opened and closed her fingers like a yammering mouth, rolling her eyes. Insert trash talk here, blah, blah. I'm sure your body pillow is very proud of you. I'm not trash talking. I'm talking to trash. Ooh. 
Dante raised his hand to get a high five from Ben, but the other man just stared at Dante. Hey, America, the archer said, narrowing her eyes at Dante as she made a show of knocking an arrow. Doesn't your ass ever get jealous of the amount of shit that comes out of your mouth? Okay, Ben said, holding up one hand at Dante and the other at the Russians. I think we can all agree that this is a colossal waste of time. Keep to this side of the clearing and we'll keep to ours, like we have been. Our mistake. Better keep your boy leashed, the archer said. I'm sick of his face. I'll show you a sick face, Dante said. What does that even mean? We're leaving, Ben grabbed Dante's arm, who immediately jerked it back out of his grasp, but complied. Piss off, Americans, the archer hawked a loogie and spat at the ground. Ben and Dante made their way back to their team, but not before Dante flipped the Russians the double bird, followed by a sarcastic salute and a grandiose bow. Do you ever turn off? Ben said. Dante did a little dance while he walked. What would be the fun in that? At least you're happier, I guess. Hell yeah, Dante grinned. I got my orange tip diamond. Just as they got back to where Etta and Tandy were, a weasel spawned. In one smooth motion, Dante unsheathed his sword and sliced the critter in half, 15 XP. So? Etta met them with a new hairstyle, bright violet tied back into one thick, long braid. He had to get her to show him how to do that. They're after a scroll, Ben said. What scroll? Tandy wiped a sweaty face on her arm. Ben tilted his head a bit. That's the question, isn't it? I bet Tandy knows, Dante said. We're not starting with that again, Etta said. We've wasted enough time. Dante rolled his eyes. He'd just ask her later. Whatever it does, Ben said. It's obviously rare, considering how many rats we've killed. All we have is gold and a useless pile of pelts to show for it. And how many hours have we been here? Forest weasels, Tandy muttered. Ben flashed her an irritated look. What? They're not rats. They're forest weasels. We should go for the scroll. Dante bounced lightly on his feet, ready for the next spawn. Anything rare will give us an edge. If we don't want to use it, we can sell or trade it, and we'll get our XP in the meantime. Sounds good to me, Etta said, tossing her braid over her shoulder. Any objections? Ben looked like he was going to say something, but Etta held up a silencing hand. Objections to something other than being in the game in the first place. Ben just skulked off to camp his designated forest weasel spawn point. Tandy, class, Veiled Archer, level 5. HP, 63 out of 71. Status, normal. XP, 7,212. Next level, 10,000. Another several hours of farming passed. Sunlight shifted toward late afternoon. Their inventory of item drops and gold had grown considerably, but no scroll. At this point, they'd be level 15 before they even saw the drop. Between spawns, Dante edged closer to Tandy, his armor clanking with every movement. She braced herself for another interrogation. So, seriously, he said, if you know more about what the scroll does, you should just tell us. I won't even be mad about it or whatever. I can let it go. But if you know more about it, I could plan ahead. Tandy white-knuckled an arrow and resisted the temptation to point it uselessly at Dante's throat. Instead, she knocked it and took aim at an empty spawn point, ready to take her churning frustration out on the next weasel. I'm sorry you can't seem to trust me, but I'm done talking about this. Hey, Tandy! Edda nodded her chin at her. Everyone is just on edge. Pretty big thing to learn about you, you know. Tandy said nothing. What else was there to say? How many permutations of I didn't know about the game could she come up with? It would probably help if you told us a little more about your connection to this whole project. A weasel spawned. Tandy's arrow flew true and found its mark. 15 XP and 3 silver. Like I said, 
I'm just an amateur game designer, and now I'm here, and I don't know why this is happening. That's all. I take it you hired someone else to write for your game, Ben said, because that's a crappy story. Stuff happened, and now I'm here. Good talk. Dante laughed. Tandy felt her ears grow hot. Darling, a mystery is impossible to trust. Etta used her staff to beat 15 XP and 3 silver out of a weasel. And right now you're just a big question mark. Surely you can see that. I'm sorry. I know. I just... I don't like talking about it. You have to understand, there's a lot at stake here. The same persistent knot of dread and anxiety continued burrowing its way through Tandy's gut. It's not as if she could pretend she didn't have a connection to the game anymore. But she had been hoping that maybe if she gave them enough time to cool off, they'd see it for the strange series of events that it was. And trust that she was just as in the dark as the rest of them about why her game, of all things, had been used as a template. Some part of her had known that was an unrealistic expectation. Not for the first time. She thought back to all those early opportunities she'd had to tell them the truth. Ugh. She wondered what sub-vocalized conversations they'd already had about her. How many private arguments about how to deal with the wild card in their midst? Maybe they were having one right now. Probably. She rolled the shoulder wearing her quiver strap and sighed. I've been working on my game for years. It started out as a fun side project but turned into a huge thing. I figured I'd eventually release it and quit my day job, but not before it was ready. Perfect. I wanted to make something people could escape into, something good. A place that could be comforting and familiar in an ugly world. Dante opened his mouth to say something, but a weasel spawned. He made quick work of skewering it, then turned back to her. If it was supposed to be such a big deal, why keep it private? It's not like you had some original masterpiece on your hands. All that frustration started curdling into self-pity. She concealed her effort to fight back tears by readying another arrow. She cleared her throat. Like I said, it wasn't time. It wasn't supposed to be played yet. I keep trying to tell you I didn't do this, Tandy said, gesturing at the world around them. And that's what I mean. I wouldn't do it. I'd never put it out into the world half-finished. The game wasn't ready and neither was I. They did it. They stole my work and used it to make this place. I didn't know until I got here. The others were uncomfortably quiet. Was she being convincing? Or were they talking to one another privately? They did have that faraway look of someone engaging with their interface. Tandy's next weasel spawned, which she killed swiftly. An alert popped up. Rare item acquired. Ben fried his next weasel. Tandy pulled up her inventory. Right there in the topmost slot sat a scroll-shaped icon. When she highlighted it, the name Noctul's Scroll appeared. Um, guys, she waved at them. I have the thing, Ben grunted. The thing? I take it we're supposed to know what you mean? I have the... Tandy stopped herself from yelling. The scroll, she said via text. It dropped. Three. Etta, Class Divine Seeker, Level 6, HP 62 out of 81, Mana 23 out of 32, Status Normal, XP 17,640, Next Level 21,000. Well, let's see it, Etta said. What's this thing we've been gunning for? Tandy granted everyone access to viewing the item. Noctul scroll. Very rare. Description. Scrawled by the hand of the ancient wizard himself. To activate, approach the sacred pedestal in Minglegrass Wood and read the text aloud before the emblem of Noctul. All right then, Dante shouted. Woo! Minglegrass Wood! Shut up. Ben grabbed Dante by the shoulder and gave him a silent, wide-eyed, reproachful look. Restraint. 
It's not far, Dante said, highlighting the location on everyone's map. He barely seemed to notice Ben's admonition. See? Let's do this thing. We shouldn't head straight there from here. Ben drew on his HUD and a dotted line appeared on the map, indicating a roundabout path from their current location to mingle grass wood that took them past Knight's Holt. Make it look like we're heading back to town. Dante gave a thumbs up. Good idea. Nice job, Tandy. You saved us from the weasels. Etta smiled and clapped her on the back. Anyone could have got the drop, but she could tell the poor thing needed a break. Dante rolled his eyes. Yeah, nice job being the one who just happened to benefit from RNG. What would we do without you? Tandy visibly shrank, but neither Dante nor Ben seemed to notice. Dante, is that really necessary? Etta gave him her best annoyed mama bear look. He might have been a pro gamer, but he was just beyond adolescence, barely a man, and she suspected part of his prior meltdown was from his lack of firm guidance in an unfamiliar context. Just because Alternus was a game didn't mean he was fully in his element. Are we going or not? Ben said, already pointed in the correct direction. I'm sick of these rats. Their journey to Minglegrass Wood was easy enough, heading west of Knightsholt, then up through a nearby valley and past a well-known waterfall. Dante led the way while Ben scouted from the rear. Everyone kept their eyes open. Who knew how much the Russians had heard? As the cool spray from the waterfall misted her skin when they crossed the river, Etta wondered how much of this was part of Tandy's vision. The waterfall? The rocks they stepped on? The silver-scaled fish swimming upstream? The chirruping insects all around them that quieted when they passed? What about that deer quietly drinking downriver, its antlers blooming with soft pink ranunculus? It was an undeniably beautiful world. Dante wasn't unreasonable to be angry with Tandy, to want answers and to make sure she wasn't hiding anything else. But if they weren't careful, they'd drive Tandy deeper into herself. No matter what her intentions, they needed her to feel comfortable enough with them to want to open up and be transparent. They'd set an adversarial tone lately and someone like Tandy would wilt under those conditions and just bury the truth. Etta resolved to create an ecosystem of emotional safety for her moving forward. To do that, she'd need the other's help. After a while, they entered the forested area marked Minglegrass Wood on their maps. They traveled wordlessly inward, looking for any indication of how to find the emblem of Nocduel. Trees reached toward one another above their heads, branches intertwining like giant hands, their dark leaves blocking out most of the sunlight. Even at midday, it was as dim as twilight. The farther they walked, the richer the scents, loam, dry leaves, the musk and dung of some hidden animal. Blue fireflies occasionally winked light at one another like tiny ghosts. Once, they came across an enormous cocoon suspended between two trees with dense spun silk, its length easily as big as Tandy. Etta almost asked her if she knew what it was, but decided to just be grateful it didn't so much as shudder when they passed. Another hour ticked by wordlessly. All senses remained on high alert. They moved slowly, cautiously. There was no telling what stood between them and the sacred pedestal. Behind them, a slithering snapping sound. All of them turned and drew their weapons, only to see the gnarled branches from nearby trees growing into a thick lattice of wood and leaf. The grass below grew taller, stretching unnaturally until it threaded up into a newly formed wall. Before anyone could react, an impenetrable barricade surrounded them on all sides and above, but they could still see by a dim light with no discernible source. Fuck! Dante adjusted his grip on his sword. This wasn't in my game, Tandy said. She seemed sincere. Etta willed herself to stay focused. Whatever this was, they couldn't lose their heads. Pretty sure I can do something about this, Ben said, already preparing a spell, his fingertips glowing like embers as he began chanting. 
Near the top of their prison, words in large white text appeared, each line faint at first, then fully materializing in succession. Trial the first. Prove your mind worthy. Memorize the dance of light. What the hell does that mean? Ben said. None of this was in my game, Tandy said. After about 15 seconds, the words dissolved into wisps of white and blew away on a breeze. Immediately, a flash of cold white light appeared against the backdrop of branches, then disappeared. Another, below and to the right of where the previous one had been. A third, toward the bottom of the wall. More text appeared. You have 15 seconds. Proceed. What? Dante said. Proceed with what? Memorize them? Yes! Classic! The first one was over here. Tandy hurried to the barricade and pointed to where it had appeared. The second, a sphere of light materialized at the first spot again, this time emanating a warm golden glow. Go! Dante pointed frantically. Here! The second one was here! As soon as the second light appeared, Edda wasted no time pointing to the third position, summoning the last golden light. All three lights disappeared. Yeah! Dante cupped his hands around his mouth and shouted in a deep register, U.S.A. Eat it, trees! Edda noticed the corner of Ben's lips twitch up into a brief smile. Well done. You have 30 seconds. Proceed. All right, then. Edda rubbed her hands together. This time, a series of six lights appeared in slightly faster succession than the first three. But between Dante and Edda, they remembered them easily. Nice, she said. He held up a fist and she bumped it. Promising. Shall we see how keen you really are? The next wave of lights winked in and out of existence in a quick, chaotic pattern. Edda tried keeping up, but they were so fast she couldn't register at least half of them much less keep count of how many. 10, maybe? 12? You have 30 seconds. Proceed. 30 seconds again, Ben said. Shit! Dante held a fist to his mouth briefly, looking pained, and then pointed to four spots, hesitating between a couple of them. They were correct. He exhaled loudly. Hurry, Etta said. She pointed to the next spot, which was correct but had no idea where the next one should have been. I don't know. Ben? Tandy? Come on. Ben started to point, but stopped himself. This is ridiculous. It was too fast. How can anyone remember that many with no time? This is rigged. Tandy shook her head. I'm sorry, I don't... Red light bathed their forest tomb, accompanied by a low sound that rumbled through the ground, loud enough to rattle their bones. Oh shit, Tandy said. What is that? Text again, now in violent red. You have failed. I should kill you where you stand. Vin and Dante readied themselves for combat. A few branches snaked out from different corners of the enclosure, groaning and twisting their way toward the group. Bark fell in flakes and small twigs snapped free as the wood reached for them. The low, resonant sound grew louder vibrating up through the soles of their feet. All four players backed up toward the center of the space, away from the threatening limbs. The branches froze. The red text, light, and ominous noise disappeared instantly. More text appeared, line by line, once again white. Then again, you showed such promise. One more try. As the words dissolved and blew away, Etta spun around to face the others and spoke quickly. Ben, Tandy, Dante, me. Three lights each in that order. What? Tandy said. Three lights per person in that order each of us remembers. Use your minds and be spared. Three lights each. Be ready. Again, an unreasonably fast series of blinking lights appeared in a new pattern. The four players focused intently. Edda silently prayed that they each memorized the correct triad of lights. Every muscle in her body tensed. She imagined her brain taking a photo of lights as she had seen them. Please let this work. You have 30 seconds. Proceed. Ben, Edda said. Go! He complied. 
quickly pointing at the locations for the first three lights, which then emitted that friendly golden glow. Tandy! She hesitated, breathed, then pointed to three spots. Gold, gold, gold. Dante bounced in place, then swiftly and successfully identified his points. He punched the air a few times. That's right! Etta finished, pointing at the last three locations she remembered, highlighted in the photograph in her mind. Please God, let this be right. She wasn't ready to find out what happened when a player died. They illuminated in order. All of them cheered. Ben put his hands on his knees and took a few deep breaths. Tandy looked like she was going to cry in relief. Bit by bit, the branches that had trapped them began to shrivel. The grass turned brown and fell away, and fragments of wood rained down around them. Four. Tandy. Class, Veiled Archer. Level, five. HP, 60 out of 71. Status, normal. XP, 7,522. Next level, 10,000. No sooner had the walls fallen than new text materialized above them line by line. Trial the second. Prove your worth. Defeat me. Tandy groaned. You don't even get a break? The words melted into a white liquid that dripped onto the ground. They all backed up away from it. As the drops collected into a puddle, the liquid rippled, then shifted and grew up into a vaguely human shape. Debris from the barricade drifted up off the ground and joined the liquid, lending mass to the being coalescing in front of them. As the last of the liquid fell and the creature attracted one last twig to its body, the grass below its feet wove up around it in a cyclone of green, coming to rest in the form of a forest-lush mage robe. A preternaturally pale white face with closed eyes emerged from within the woven grass hood. Everything fell silent and still. Oh no. Tandy recognized this. Sort of, anyway. The context for this mini-boss was completely different than she had in mind, and she hadn't even placed it anywhere in the game. It was just a bunch of code disconnected from anything else. The team readied their weapons for combat. Ben's hands gestured in mid-air as he whispered under his breath, preparing a spell. Dante kept his eyes on the mini-boss but grabbed at Tandy's arm. Hey, did you, uh... Yes, Tandy said breathlessly. Yes, I recognize this one. It's different, but... The being opened his eyes to reveal a horrifying white nothing illuminating the empty sockets. And when he spoke, his mouth emanated a beam of cold light that looked so surreal and unnatural, it made Tandy want to fold up inside herself. His voice, somehow, impossibly, sounded like the breaking of a thousand branches, the crushing of a million leaves underfoot. And beneath every word, a distant shriek peeled off into the black. I am the wizard Nocturl. Defeat me or become part of the wood. No time to strategize. A branch grew up out of the ground, split into two, and ensnared Ben and Etta around the midsection, pinning their arms tight against them. Dante shouted and lunged at Nocturl, attempting to plunge his sword into his body, but it was useless. It didn't even make contact. The blade struck an invisible force field around the mini-boss. Nocturl wasted no time retaliating, swiping a tree-like hand across Dante's body, knocking him ten feet away with a loud crash. Ben and Etta took damage over time while ensnared. Five XP every few seconds, and both were shouting in a froth of rage and pain. It's invulnerable, Tandy yelled. Ben, Etta! You have to run away from each other. <laughs> Nocturne roared, beaming the light from his mouth straight at Tandy. She dove away, but it singed her arm. Minus 1,000 XP. Go! Tandy yelled, clutching her injured arm. Run away from each other! They complied, struggling to move while bound, but ultimately pulling in opposite directions while Tandy tried to keep Nocturne focused on her. 
she fumbled a few times trying to knock arrows, then breathed through her anxiety and loosed several at him despite the futility, hoping this would at least keep him away from the others. Dante joined Tandy. Hey, fuckface! He swung his sword in a circle at his side, then struck a dramatic crouched pose. Sword held aloft in front of him, looking every bit the part of the video game hero. Blood and dirt caked his face, but he grinned. You must not have realized, we're Team USA. Winning is what we do. <laughs> Knock Jewel laughed from deep inside his belly, shaking the trees. Once Ben and Etta had moved far enough in opposite directions that they had to strain to take another step, the branches snapped apart and disappeared. Don't let the light from his mouth touch you, Tandy shouted. Keep moving! Four shadowy orbs emerged from the ground and floated toward each of them, gaining in speed until they could no longer evade both the orbs and Noctul's attacks. Each team member was momentarily engulfed in darkness when the orb overtook them, but it quickly dissolved. Minus 35 HP magic damage. Tandy is afflicted with slow heal. Dante is afflicted with slow heal. Etta is afflicted with slow heal. Ben is afflicted with slow heal. Now healing spells would take far longer to fill each player's HP. Fuck, Dante said, then dodged Noctul's beam of light. It seared the ground where he had been standing. Y'all better not die! Noctul motioned with his palms facing the ground, then grabbed at the empty air and slowly lifted. The ground shook and split apart, releasing two tusk boar-like creatures made of mud and wood, their eyes the same annihilating white. Ads! Dante shouted. Focus on the ads! Ads? Etta yelled. What? The new enemies! Dante's voice strained with effort and frustration. Added mobs! The boars roared. The earth mended itself. They charged. Ben aimed a lightning spell and struck one boar with a critical hit. The lightning chained and struck the second creature for half damage. Tandy moved out of the way and knocked an arrow took aim at the first boar and shot it. Dante provoked the second one and held it off to the side. Yes, kill that one first. I'll keep this one busy. Etta used her staff to jab at the boar while Ben prepared another spell. Tandy was the one it wanted, though. The one whose arrows protruded from its haunch and chest. She was aiming for the stomach, but its constant movement made it difficult. It'll rear up, she said, breathing heavily. Hit it in the stomach. They kept it engaged in the meantime, hacking away at its HP while defending against its ferocious tusks and several putrid breath attacks. Finally, the boar reared up on its hind legs and threatened to stomp on Etta. Now! Tandy cried, and loosed an arrow at the same time that Ben unleashed a raging ball of flame that churned like a tiny sun. The creature let out a terrible wail and then its dead body crashed into the ground. Dante whooped at their victory, and in the same way, they made short work of the second boar. Wasting no time, Tandy spun around and shot Noctul between two of the branches that comprised his chest, and this time it actually landed. Minus 200 HP. He's vulnerable. <laughs> Noctul roared with a chorus of voices and shrieks. Tandy knocked another arrow. Etta and Ben chanted quickly. Dante charged forward with a warrior cry. Etta opened her hands and unleashed a cantrip in a blinding flash, striking Noctul and inflicting 20 damage over time. Dante took full advantage of this and pummeled their enemy repeatedly, slicing grass and chopping the wood of Noctul's body, dodging his light beam attacks all the while until the mini boss was wet with his own sap-like blood. Ben finished casting his spell calling forth his rain of embers and blanketing Noctul with ash. Leaves caught fire throughout his body, which spread and engulfed him in flame. The light attacks grew frenzied and chaotic. One grazed at his leg, another, Tandy barely managed to avoid. She felt the heat on her cheek and smelled ozone. Soon the attacks became erratic and uncontrolled. Noctul was dying. Fire completely enveloped him. He flailed his arms and shrieked so loudly that they all covered their ears. The sound echoed throughout the forest. 
When the flames disappeared, Nakdul's charred body remained still for a moment. Then its constituent components fell away. What remained of his bark dropped in sheets and flakes. Columns of ash that were once his limbs disintegrated. Burnt wood broke apart and dissolved into the ground until there was nothing left but a black ring of dead earth where he'd fallen. Oh my god, Tandy said, and let her muscles go limp with relief. Everyone else cheered riotously. Dante even hugged Etta, and when he tried giving Ben a high five, Ben actually clapped his hand and shouted in victory. Impressive. Dread lurched up inside Tandy and nearly swallowed her whole. This had to be over. It had to be. Now. Shall our fight truly begin? A different, menacing version of Noctuel made of swirling light and shadow materialized in front of them in a strobing series of flashes. It spun slowly a few times, unfurling an imposing pair of wings and growing its body until it was twice the size of the original mini-boss. Phase change, Dante said. Get ready, it's gonna be worse. Etta cast a heal over time canticle on the team. Nocduel summoned several blasts of energy throughout the arena to threaten them with his power. Let us dance. Dante reached down and offered his hand to Tandy. After a moment, she took it and he hoisted her up. You really need to work in your dialogue. He shook his head and turned his attention to Nocduel, gripping his sword tightly. From the dark forest behind the party, a new voice chanted quietly. Then a cloud of pale green gas glided over their heads and made contact with Noctuel. Flying text above Noctuel read, Slowed, 45 seconds. Olinka and the rest of Team Russia rushed onto the battlefield, ready to fight. Five. Dante. Class, Bladed Guardian. Level, seven. HP, 41 out of 116. Status, normal. XP, 23,080. Next level, 28,000. Olinka? Dante wasn't sure whether to be relieved or pissed. Don't act so surprised, she grinned. Like we'd let you get the jump on us? Besides, you could be the only living thing in Altronis and still manage to die. So I figured you need some help. Nocturne interrupted their greeting with a throaty chuckle. <laughs> you make jokes? Perhaps you should consider the primacy of the situation. As he spoke, the word primacy appeared in white text over Nocturne's head, lingered for a moment, and then vanished. His dialogue is terrible, Olenka said. Dante surreptitiously glanced at Tandy but she betrayed no hint of offense in front of the other team. Good. The towering wizard clenched his fists and roared. <laughs> Brief flying text indicated Noctuel had gone invulnerable. As his bellow echoed through the trees and died away, four more adds grew up from the ground in each of the four cardinal directions. Miniature Noctuels, identical to him down to the smallest detail, except for one difference, the number of heads on each ad. Three, four, five, and six heads crowded on four different bodies, their necks twisting and writhing as each head moved. All 18 heads immediately opened their mouths and began shooting their own white beams of light, just as Noctuel had during the first phase of the fight. Every player scrambled, dodging in the chaos. Shortly after spawning, the adds floated clockwise around the area, pausing every few seconds to unleash a cross-hatched pattern of beams that the players also had to dodge. Primacy, Tandy said, moving out of the way of two beams. Prime numbers, Etta turned to her. What? Dante bounced on the balls of his feet, ready to dodge the next wave of light. Heads up, attack the ones with three or five heads. Wait, Olinka stumbled but caught herself before falling into a beam. How do we know that the prime numbers aren't the ones we should keep alive? Ben released a lightning spell onto the three-headed one. I'm going with Tandy's instincts on this one. No, no, no! Dante waved at Ben with both arms. 
Yes, kill the primes, but no more lightning. If you crit and it chains, you might hit the other adds. Everyone, no AOE attacks. Single target only. Russia, with me on the five heads. Ruslana edged her way toward the ad. America, take three, Edda nodded. Then Dante provoked the three-headed mini knock duel to affix its attention firmly on him, dodging as much of the damage as he could. It took a long time to chip away at the ad's HP with so much of the player's attention focused on dodging the numerous beam attacks. Their best bet was to attack as urgently as possible while the ads were floating clockwise, and then sacrifice damage output to dodge while they attacked. Eventually, the prime numbered ads were both down to roughly 2% of their health, while the other two ads remained at nearly full HP. I sure hope you're right about this, Olenka called out, then shot a final shard of ice at the five-headed ad. At the same time, Dante plunged his sword into the three-headed ad's chest. All four of the mini knock tools shrieked and exploded. <sighs> Noctul spun around once and flickered, becoming vulnerable again. But shall we see how well you cope when you lose your minds? Three shots of dark purple energy exploded from Noctul's fingers and hit Dante, Tandy, and Olenka. Flying text appeared up above all three of them. Mind control. 60 seconds. Everything in Dante's field of vision grew hazy and distorted cast in wan, desaturated colors. A sensation crawled into his brain like a million tiny fingers latching onto his mind, digging into everything that made Dante Dante and peeling it away from his control. His consciousness was a chained captive in the shell of his skull. Somewhere far away, Noctua laughed. Hands that no longer belonged to him positioned his sword for attack, and his body turned toward Ben. When Noctul had moved him, he caught a brief glimpse of Tandy zombie lurching toward Olenka. Arrow pointed directly at her. Her movements were inhuman, and she shot Olenka in the shoulder. Despite not being in PvP mode, the hit did damage as an effect of mind control. Of course, the enemy still allowed Olenka just enough control over herself to scream in pain. Fire flickered in Olenka's right palm. She took aim at her own archer. Dante couldn't see whether it met its mark, but there was a loud explosion and a blast of heat far to his right, and the Russian archer tumbled into his field of view with flame-singed gear. Snapshot memories of past games flickered through Dante's thoughts. Moments when the concept of mind control was nothing more than an element of raid strategy. He would never think about it the same way again. Just wait it out, Edda shouted from behind him. The rest of us will focus on Noctul. As his body moved to attack without his will driving it, he staggered toward Ben, whose glass cannon stats wouldn't let him survive long if Dante managed to skewer him. Muscles moved, tensed, readied his sword. He tried shutting his eyes, but Noctul refused him even that small mercy. Noctul's rolling laughter would have sounded overwrought in a console game but now it congealed into a ball of dread in Dante's stomach. Ben moved away from him, sweat and concentration on his face as he chanted out a spell. Dante pursued. Both Tandy and Olinka turned their attention to Ben as well. They convened on him with one shared objective, kill. A flash of green and Dante's movements grew heavy. Slow. Etta. Yes! and the duration of the slow debuff matched the time remaining on the mind control debuff at that. He'd have cheered for her if he could. The three possessed lurched toward Ben, but he backed away as he finished his spell and discharged it at Noctul. A gust of flame erupted from his open palms, exploding against Noctul's chest. 87 damage. Ruslana whooped and exclaimed something in Russian before charging at Noctul. Before she could sink her sword into him, he swept a large hand across her path and electrocuted her. Electricity snapped and buzzed around her stunned body every few ticks. Paralyzed. Hold on, just a little longer, Etta shouted. Even slowed, 
Dante and Olenka pursued Ben relentlessly, while Nocturne switched Tandy's focus over to Etta. She skillfully unleashed arrow after arrow at their healer, but her sluggish movements allowed Etta enough time to dodge. Still, she was showing signs of fatigue, and one wrong step could mean an arrow in the gut. Or the head. Fifteen more seconds. Olenka's ice spells froze patches of ground, making it difficult for Ben to maneuver away. Spell after spell, large sections of dirt iced over. Blood stained her robe, Tandy's arrow still sticking out of her shoulder. Ben began charging his ashfall spell. And then a lifetime of consciousness and memory hit Dante's mind with the force of a tsunami, and all bodily sensation returned to him, infusing his flesh with his sense of self once more. All three victims of the status effect vomited from disorientation. Olenka wiped her mouth, then savagely ripped the arrow from her shoulder, growling in pain through clenched teeth. Ben finished casting Ashfall, melting Olenka's patches of ice. Their battlefield had turned into a slippery mixture of mud and debris, but it was better than a skating rink. Before Dante could fully collect himself, Noctul discharged an energy pulse at Etta. She tried dodging, but her reaction time was too slow. The impact applied a debuff to her with a five-second countdown timer. She staggered and looked at Tandy. What's about to... Countdown complete. Etta exploded hitting both Tandy and the Russian Archer with the splash damage for 10 HP plus a DOT debuff that would last 30 seconds. Etta! Ben ran toward her, but Dante, Tandy, and Olinka shouted for him to wait. When the smoke cleared, Etta looked frightened and injured but nonetheless whole. She had suffered 20 damage, a loss of all her remaining mana, and a five-minute debuff that would prevent her from recovering HP. The fight waged on. Attack after attack burst from both sides. The tanks periodically swapped aggro, giving the other a chance to recuperate and lose their debuff stacks. Nakduel summoned a second wave of the same adds from earlier, and both teams repeated the grueling process of chipping away at the prime-numbered enemies while dodging attacks from all 18 heads. This time, Nakduel periodically slammed his fists down onto the ground and shook the earth, inflicting party-wide damage that Etta and the Russian healer both had to mitigate with AoE spells. Not only did they have to dodge attacks, they had to remain in range of the healers. Every bit of HP they eked out of Noctua was a tiny victory. On and on they fought, and the more they lowered Noctua's health, the more wrathful he became, speeding up his attacks. And when Dante felt he would collapse from the mental exhaustion of remaining focused for so long, plus the physical strain of trying not to slip in the mud, he and Ruslana sliced across Nocturne simultaneously, hacking away the final few hit points they needed to destroy their foe. Nocturne roared so loudly that all eight players covered their ears and the earth trembled. White light exploded out of his eyes and his mouth, then through growing cracks in his body until his entire being was engulfed in a blazing pillar. Then, in an instant, all was silent and still. Where the searing, demonic form of the mighty wizard Nocturne had once terrorized them, now only a frail human body remained. Tattered gray robes pooled around an ancient-looking man whose bones protruded beneath his paper-thin skin. Saplings sprouted from his chest, splitting the flesh and bone, transforming his corpse into the forest he had used against them. Delicate stalks thickened into powerful trunks in seconds, twisting around one another and changing shape until a gnarled wooden pedestal stood before them. Finally, Tandy accessed her inventory and headed straight for it. Wait! Ben held his hand out in front of Tandy to stop her, then looked at Ruslana. Tell us what it does. The other three Russian players laughed. Smug bastards. Ruslana straightened her posture. Read it, or don't, and give it to us. We'll do it. No way, Dante said. 
We're not giving up a rare drop. Give it here. Etta held a hand to Tandy. She hesitated, but then dropped it into Etta's inventory. It materialized in her hand. Etta approached the pedestal, unfurled the scroll, and set it atop the emblem. She read the text aloud, a long, boring string of words in some kind of creepy wizard speak. Dante didn't recognize the language. For a moment, nothing happened. Damn, Dante thought. They should have sold the scroll instead. How much would it have gotten them? Or traded it? Or... Suddenly, a series of numbers appeared on his HUD. One minute. Are you guys seeing this? He said at the same time Tandy said. What the hell? As soon as the words were out of his mouth, the numbers began counting down. It's a timer. The unmistakable sound of an arrow whizzing past. Tandy's agonized scream. Russia's archer already knocked another arrow. No, not PvP again. PvP! Dante shouted. Go! Run! Damn it, Olinka! Really? Time to be the tank. Another arrow flew at them, but Dante darted in front and held up his shield. The arrow clanked loudly but uselessly against it before falling to the ground. He glanced back at the others. Blood poured from Tandy's calf as she struggled to stay upright and made horrible, pained noises. Etta was already at her side, quietly chanting a healing spell as she helped Tandy move away. Oh my god, Tandy groaned. Oh god, it hurts. I got you, honey. Blue light glowed beneath Etta's gentle hand. A sound like breaking ice echoed through the trees as Team USA scrambled to exit the area. Olinka chanted in a low, menacing voice, her hands working the air in front of her. Between her claw-like fingers, four spheres of ice slowly grew in size, then elongated into spikes that pointed straight at them. Go! Dante shouted at his teammates and pushed them into a run. Go! Now! Tears fell down Tandy's face, her jaw clenched in pain, but she pushed on, limping and relying on Etta. Ben fell in behind them and unleashed a fire spell as they ran, sending several columns of flame barreling toward Olenka. Yeah, Dante shouted. My man Ben, the flamethrower! It must have worked, because they weren't skewered by giant icicles. They fled, but Russia was close behind them and moving fast. Mercifully, the path was clear of trials, but the trees and underbrush were so thick, the forest so dark, that a primal fear of the unknown clinched Dante's heart. Crashing sounds came from their left, then their right, but he couldn't see anything in the impenetrable black beyond the few feet around them. An explosion detonated on the ground to his right, sending shards of ice ricocheting off his armor. Olenka was still at it. The team came up against a small hill of downed tree trunks and fallen rocks. Dante and Ben helped Etta and Tandy try to climb, but Tandy cried out and slid back down, dislodging Scree beneath her boots. Dante took her arm and hoisted her up. We have to go! You have to push through! Dante said. Tandy spoke through clenched teeth. Can't you talk to her? I know her. She's a ruthless gamer. We have to go. I have to heal Tandy, Etta said. She needs. Olinka emerged from the darkness and wasted no time. She threw back her cloak, finished reciting a spell under her breath, and discharged a barrage of icicles at Etta. Dante still had his arms around Tandy, but he saw Ben moving out of the corner of his eye. There was no time for Ben to activate a defensive spell. He just launched himself in front of Etta, taking the hit full force in the center of his chest. The impact sent him sailing back into the pile of rubble. Ben's body lay in a heap of debris and blood, and his HP was zero. You're listening to Control Alt Destroy, starring Summer Glau. Produced by Realm, your portal to another world. Realm, listen away. 
Control Alt Destroy is written by Andrea Phillips, Maurice Broadus, Jacqueline Koyanagi, and E. C. Myers. Executive produced by Molly Barton and Julian Yap. Audio production, sound design, editing, and theme music by Amanda Rose Smith.